Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to this webinar organized by Afro Invest Securities Limited to discuss the topic, how to become a smart investor. We can see that we have quite a number here, so we won't be taking any more of your time. We'll be jumping straight in. So the decision to discuss this topic was raised by the how many occasions that we've had our clients come to us and complain about being scammed or the many Ponzi schemes that are in the market now that look like real investments. And we, you know, we're looking out for you. So we want to talk about this. So feel free, this is not, there's no need to feel ashamed of the experiences that you've had. Many of us have had the same experiences and we're better for them. So right now we'll be jumping straight in, but before let me introduce myself. My name is Treasure Okuku and I'll be moderating this session. It promises to be exciting and very informative. So sit back and relax. Um, we'll get into it straight away, but before we do, please, I know you know some people that should be in this webinar that should be listening to us that, you know, who want to need this information or would actually need this information, please share the link. We see the number increasing and we know that we can have more people join and get educated on this topic. Um, our first speaker is a financial has been in the financial services industry for quite a while. She's one with a wealth of experience. She's a deputy managing director of Afri Invest Securities Limited. Her name is Taiwo Ugundipe. Welcome with me, Taiwo. Welcome, Taiwo. Thank you, Treasurer. And good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you for the opportunity of uh, in educating us this afternoon on uh, smart investing. And also, thank you for taking out of your time to be with us this afternoon. Okay, so going into our discussion this afternoon, because we all want to interact, excuse me, <clears throat> and talk about smart investing. We want to know what are the basics that we need to look at before we go into any form of uh, investment, if at all. And uh, before we do that, it's, it's also important to ask ourselves, who is a smart investor? For um, most individuals, everybody will think, okay, and a, a smart investor is probably someone that has put his money in a form of investment and is giving them a good return as far as the person is happy. Yes, that's correct. But does that end there? Does, is that all it takes to uh, actually just put in your money? So we're going to look at those basics, those things that will help you and I to make a, a good decision in when it comes to putting our money or giving our money out for the purpose of investment. So to start with, we will look at the proper definition of a smart investor. First, we will look at a smart investor is actually someone who has done so much of uh, research, who has put in so much of uh, information as regards the capital market the company is investing with, and uh, what benefits he or she plan to gain in this in, in, in whatever he or she decide to do at that point in time. So putting all this information together as an individual, it will help you then to take a firm decision. So this information, I'll categorize them into three groups. One is self-profiling. And the second one is profiling the company you want to invest with. And uh, lastly, uh, profiling the investment itself, the product, what are the benefits, what are those information you need to. So when it comes to profiling yourself as an individual before you make investment options, First, you need to understand what is your own risk appetite. Are you the type that when you invest in a particular product and there's a slight drop in your capital, you won't be able to eat or sleep? You need to actually, you need to be sincere with yourself. Or you're the type that when the um, investment drops or anything happens, you know very well, you stand with it back and say, okay, we are here for it. The market will take a new turn. You need to understand yourself. Another aspect to look at why profiling yourself is this fund you are investing, what is the um, objective? Is it for retirement? How long do you want to go? Is it on a short-term basis or you just want to do something speculative and then uh, take back your money? When you've put all of this together, you can then now go forward to look at the company that you are in, willing to invest in their product and to do that you need to look at uh, who and what does the company do who are they how long have they been around 
this will help you to know, okay, if these people have the experience or the expertise to actually manage your fund. For us at Afri Invest, for instance, we've been in this sector, we've been in this business for the past over 25 years. Through the think and turn, to the cycle of the market meltdown, the time the market was booming, we've been there, we've seen it, and we're still standing strong and still growing. So that's to tell you we have wealth of experience of what has happened in the market, talk of any form of investment you want to do. We have all it takes to achieve that investment plan. And then also looking at uh, the next, uh, the last group I mentioned, which I said is the investment you're about to do. This investment, you need to understand all the risk that is associated with it. And of course, you need to know what are the benefits? What do you stand to gain? Does this suit your investment plan? Does it really conform with what you have in mind? This will help you then to decide okay, I want to go for it, or I'll take it, sit back and look at some something else. So those are all the informations you put together. And uh, does this all stand that this is all it takes? There are some also some red flags that will also help you to uh, look at what is, uh, if, uh, what is essential before you go ahead and put your money. The red flags we're talking about here are like what we call the signs the signs and wonders that you can see with your eyes and decides that, hey, this is not a good one for me to go. So one of them is referral system. When we talk about referral system, a lot of us have done, uh, we've come across all sorts of investment people coming to us, telling us this, telling us that. So people tell you is until you bring all the people in your village before you can get any form of return or have an increase over your investment. If you invest in any regulated entity, all you need to do is open, fill your account opening form, and you submit your know your client um, documentation, which is what we call the KYC. Once all of these are submitted, you have you have the right to have an account, and you can start trading any product of your choice. It's as simple as that. So, but you are not supposed to be put under the pressure of bringing anybody on board before you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. So, the next one also is uh, taking loans. Some people asking you to take loans to invest. In the regulated market, even as low as 1,000, you can invest in any equity out there. And we have some products that in, with as low as 5,000, the federal government savings bond, you can invest. So you don't need to take loans. You don't need to start taking, someone putting you under that pressure of coming to take as much loans as possible before you can invest. You need to have all this information at your fingertips. And you see these signs when they come to you, you rebuke them. Then another um, uh, point on the red flag is also urgency to invest. Yes, a lot of clients have come to us. They've given us a lot of I mean, feedback on some investment they've done that has gone wrong. You see them coming to tell you, if you don't invest now, then you lose out. Is it that now or never? No, it does not happen like that in a regulated environment. If you are investing today, you'll be sure to come anytime next week, tomorrow, next year. The market is there for you. So don't be, don't fall on that. Pray that if it is not now, then never. And another one is uh, return. Yes, everybody wants to roll with the big guys. Yes. But I, I tell you, before you start running kitty cutter, you better look before you leave. If someone is promising you 50% return in 10 days, it seems all juicy. I'm sure when this information hits you the first time, 50% in 10 days, you yourself, your instinct will tell you something is wrong. So this kind of uh, investment, you need to be sure that this goes well with your spirit, so to say. You, 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 you wouldn't want to do a situation, you're yeah, going to an investment and at the end of the day, the return you're supposed to get, you're not getting. Even the, your capital, everything all gone. You know, your instinct will always tell you when something is too good, I mean, to be true. And then another thing also is for most of this company, one we want to ascertain who they are, like I mentioned earlier. Are they licensed? Are they, are they for real? So for us, like at Afri Invest, we are licensed by the Nigerian Security and Exchange Commission. And for us, we, we, we can tell you that if you even want to verify where our offices are, we are located in the first state in the country. We are in Abuja, we are in Lagos, we are in Onicha, and right here in Port Harcourt, where I'm speaking from, 
So uh, it's as good as you popping into our offices wanting to find out more about us. And if it's our management, you can always go to our website to see what and what we have up our sleeves. It's as very easy as that to verify some of the company that we that come that we come across before we make any fund, um, investment. And uh, lastly, also it would be nice for us to know that when you have an idea of an investment plan and uh, you need a lot of information to help you if you're asking an outfit to help you with uh, you getting through and having an idea of what you're doing if you are not satisfied with the kind of feedback you have or the kind of answers you have been given that's a noise pointer for every one of us to know that okay these people all they just want to do is collect my money and then move away that's enough for us to take a seat back and make sure that yeah you have all it takes you have all the information required before you drop your money and uh, before i um, pass on to the next speaker like our mother used to advise us growing up they tell us look road before you cross so i would employ an every one of us today to this afternoon let us look very well have all the information required whatever it takes you know, it take your time. Nobody should push it to something you want to do under one second and believe you provide all the information. Take your time, look left, look right before you leap into it. Thank you. Thank you, Tyro. Thank you so much. I'd like to add another adage, if I'm allowed to. Um, it's a very popular one these days. It says, follow no road. Afro Invest knows road. So I think you should follow us. You, know, you understand? Thank you so much, Tyro. That was very detailed. And please, you can begin to drop your questions and members of the team will respond to you as much as we can. And as many as we can take, we'll read them out and respond to them. Um, do we have anybody in the house who has had an experience with a Ponzi scheme or a finance, you know, scammer that just wants to share their experience very quickly? You can raise your hand if you'd want to share with us. Oh, I see oh, a I hand see. raised. Mr. Dennis Ufot. Uh, we can only take one for now. But yes, we can take Mr. Dennis Ufot for now. And if we have some more time, we'll take Mr. Shesson. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Dennis. Mr. Dennis, please unmute and speak. Yes, go ahead. Very me now. Uh, okay. I had uh, this uh, sovereign uh, well fund that um, advert came up and I tried to find out those little due diligence with the banks that were receiving the payment. It had to be with HSBC and, and Barclays in the UK. Um, I went into the investment, started getting uh, my daily statement, but two years down the line, I requested to pull out of the investment to pull some money for something, and then I discovered it was a scam. And the money was locked in till today. Nothing can be done. After writing to the banks in the UK, uh, passing through some lawyers, they say no, there is nothing they can do about it. It was a scam. But the surprising thing to me was how a bank like HSBC and Barclays could uh, allow such things to happen using them it was a very bad experience for me thank you thank you mr dennis uh that's i'm so sorry about your experience you know some of us have done many let's be honest even some of us on this call that are speaking to you so that's why we can know the red flags some of us did mmm and that was a popular one we know ourselves there's no need to hide some of us did the other ones that we can't really mention their names we did them and we got burned. So I think this is this is going to be really helpful to very many people. Take note of these red flags. Don't fall. See, these people don't care. That's one thing you need to understand. They don't care that you worked hard for your money. They don't care that you've gone all the miles. They just want to chop your money and clean mouths. So to be safe, please, let's be on the lookout. Um, we'd like to take a few questions now um, that can be directed to Taiwo or any, any discussants on the call just a few to begin with um there's a question here from rotimio lubi it says but there are some companies that are even registered with sec 
Yet, some years down the line, once funds are trapped, saying that SEC instructed them to stop, in that instance, will you say that the person has not done due diligence? So I'm guessing Mr. Rotimi wants to know what to do, even if the organization is registered with SEC. Adidoin, can you help us with that? Okay, thanks. Um, thanks for that question. You know, there are some, SEC is the regulatory body for most um, financial institutions, but some institutions are actually registered, just like uh, Mr. Uded said earlier, he did with HSBC, which is a, um, what's it called? reputable banks so we have exceptions like that really but what we would say and i'm sure that is in the past even securities and exchange commission they are more careful when it comes to regulating this body and approving of any investment now and then we're really asking questions much and doing due diligence it goes beyond you know it's just one of the red flags the ones that are not the, uh, the ones that are not registered. It's just one of the red flags. There are other red flags that you need to look into. So beyond um, them being registered, that's not the only path to investing with firms. You also need to look at other, um, other red flags, ask more questions, and ask more questions, and you might be able to pick more of all these um, red flags for you before you proceed. Treasure, I'm seeing the comments that was distracting. Who is that they're doing? No introduction. That's what I'm we'll introducing very soon. My apologies. Please go ahead. Sorry about that. So I hope I've been able to answer Rotimi's question, Mr. Rotimi, to an extent. You, there are more questions you need to ask beyond the licensed investment. So yeah, they are licensed. What kind of investment are you putting my money to? The product itself, is it regulated? Is it backed up? What kind of, um, is it a secured investment? So beyond the company itself, even the product they are investing in, you need to be sure of, of the product itself. Okay, thank you, Adedoi. So Adedoi Allen is the Managing Director of Afro Invest Securities Limited. She'll, be, she'll still be speaking with us, so I apologize for not introducing her before she answered the question. Um, I have another question here that I want to direct to Taiwo Ogundipe. Taiwo, this person says, um, this person says, private placements in the public arena trapped many investors. Can you say that investors were mistaken? I'll read it again. Private placements in the public arena trapped many investors. Can you say that investors were mistaken? Tyro. All right, um, Treasure, thank you for, uh, for that. And uh, to answer to that question, I know that um, a lot of uh, investors have been um, introduced to a lot of products and including the private placement we mentioned here. The, the truth of the matter is just like uh, Adredoin mentioned, before now uh, there are a lot of things that we were not asking questions about and there were a lot of things uh, that were not put in place by the regulatory bodies then. But currently in the last two, three years, their main uh, focus is customers' protection. Everything that's been put out there is for the protection of investors. So I can assure you that um, at the current situation now, when investment is being uh, done and all that, you can be sure that to some extent, your, um, your fund is being in a good hand. And also, if you feel that this investment was done through your house and uh, you, uh, you need more information on how to go about recalling your fund, you can actually send an email or reach out to the Security and Exchange Commission. They are sure to uh, give, get you a response on how to go about it that will help you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tyro. Um, I can see more questions coming in. Please know that we'll take them in batches um, you know, after we have each, each speaker speak so that it's easier to attend to as many questions as we can. Um, thank you so much to Tyro and Doyin for answering those questions very clearly and in detail. So now we'll be going to our next speaker. Our next speaker is an authority in the financial services industry. He's been here for around 13 years, you know. He has a lot of knowledge when it comes to this. And he's on our team as well. His name is Bolaji Fajenyo. He'll be speaking to us about investment opportunities. Let's have you, Bolaji. Thank you so much, Treasurer, for the flattering introduction. Um, like my colleague said earlier, 
before you go into any form of investment, the most important thing for you to do is ask questions. If you are able to understand the type of investment you're going into and you know it's um, not secured or has a little bit of insecurity, then you can be prepared for whatever um, end result this type of investment will give you. Uh, all this being said, I'm going to touch on some viable investments you can take advantage of, which is also regulated. I know there are all sorts of investment there. In fact, um, I think mid last year or towards early mid, yeah, towards early mid last year, there were some sorts of investments that were given very high interest rates, to be precise. I think a Greek investment kind of. And when everybody was mentioning that, don't you guys do this type of investment? The first thing I said was, what are they investing in? He said, for this agri-greek investment, their products is being sold and the likes. And I said, agriculture, as much as viable as it is, has its own risks as well. What if the storage units of or, or the storage place warehouse of whatever agri-produce is being sold gets burnt, or um, the crops that have to be sold gets bad? Because all these type of things has lifespan. And they say, okay, well, what else can we invest in that gives a very high interest rate? And I told them, if you're going to make any form of investment, once the interest rate is too good to be true and is way higher than what is obtainable in the market, you just have to be very, very careful. Uh, all this being said, I'll be talking about um, some viable investments you can take advantage of, even though there are several of them. Or I'll be taking treasury bills first. We also have federal government bonds, and under federal government bonds, we have state government bonds, we have municipal bonds, we have euro bonds as well. Under treasury bills, we have something similar to treasury bills, which is called commercial paper, and we have equity investments. And even though to an extent, equity investments doesn't really guarantee your capital like that. You are aware of your underlying asset that you're buying into. So moving on, um, to start with, treasury bills. Treasury bills are short-term debt obligation backed by the treasury department with the majority of one year or less. Our treasury bills are usually sold in denominations of uh, um, a thousand. And uh, if you're going to subscribe to treasury bills through the secondary or primary markets, the latter you need to have as high as 50 million to be able to subscribe in treasury bills through the primary market. However, uh, depending on investment house or the securities firm you want to invest in, for us, for Afri Invest, with as low as 100,000 Naira, you can take advantage of the treasury bills um, market. You can buy through the secondary market and um, watch your investments grow. You also have the opportunity to either take your interest off front or you reinvest with the capital you're putting in. Um, I know some of us might must have been seeing the rates and you'll be like, oh, these rates are too low. I can't put my money in this type of investment, but it's better for your capital to be safe than for you to invest in something that you won't um, see your capital again. So further, furthermore, advantages of T-bills includes, it's a, it's a short-term debt obligation, Within, it has several tenors between, let's say, 20, 30 days to like 364 days, be it through the primary market or the secondary market. So this type of investment can, you can plan towards a certain goal. Instead of putting your funds in the bank, you can just put your funds in treasury bills and let it match up take out the funds, um, let the funds work for you for 
fatality you invested it for. Um, another thing I want us to put into consideration is the longer you invest in treasury bills for, the better your interest rate. I know some of us ask can, can't ask for just 30 days or 50 days, but we should put into consideration that uh, interest calculation on treasury bills are prorated. And you have to put into consideration the number of days you're investing in. So calculating it is quite easy and you can multiply the interest rate with the number of days you're investing for, then you divide it by the number of days in the year, the returns will be. Uh, so as it's, this is quite simple. To know what your returns will be, multiply your capital by the interest rate, multiply that by the tenor, and divide it by the number of um, days in the year. It has zero default risk, because TVS has government's guarantee. No matter what happens, all they have to do is print out the funds and return it to you. Also, um, TVS used to be in, in income, it used to be tax exempt, but recently uh, the federal government started giving a year now. Uh, income and treasury bills are now taxed. And also, there's always exit at any time. Do there might be charges if you're exiting uh, before the maturity date, but it's quite liquid and you can exit at any time. Uh, moving on to the next um, product you can take advantage of that is quite similar to treasury bills is commercial paper. Basically, commercial papers are unsecured promissory notes issued by a firm to raise funds for short period, also varying from 90 days to 364 days. It is usually issued by firms insurance companies, pension funds, banks, depending on um, their need for funds at the particular time the offer has been floated. And it is always very, very important to uh, know the credit rating of commercial papers that you want to invest in simply because it is an unsecured promissory note. Advantage of commercial papers includes it does not contain any restrictive condition as it is sold on a non-secured basis. You can, um, uh, for a company looking at raising funds, you're selling to the teaming investors and there is no security whatsoever. But the most important thing is uh, if you have a good credit rating, people would definitely be interested in the investment you're putting up. And to also um, lay emphasis on this, um, it is quite important to, to, um, to read and ask questions about the companies as well. So if you see a commercial paper, get on the internet, read about the company floating it, uh, check their credit rating if it's possible, because. There are some other bonds like that and trade, um, commercial paper investments that um, you see credit ratings of CC and BB negative or BB positive. Uh, it's not advisable uh, to go into such investments. Um, another advantage of commercial paper is that your interest can be earned upfront as well and you also have the opportunity to reinvest your interest um this takes me to the next um, product which will be excuse me which will be federal government savings bonds uh, federal government is just the fgm bond is um, investment needs of retail investors. It's as low as 5,000 Naira fund. It has a tenure of two and three years, and the most um, 
The good thing about MDS savings bond is it guarantees you regular cash inflow in that your coupon or interest is paid on a quarterly basis. So every three months, you know something is coming on, coming into your account and you can easily um, put back that um, funds in that same urgent savings bond because you have offers coming on every month. And a good, what I would explain is if you invest in FGC based bond on a monthly basis, you can do it in such a way that every three months something comes into your account which can be used for other things, um, other important things. Then going to FGM bonds. FGM bonds are a little capital intensive, and that's why the federal government came up with FGM savings bond. Um, to invest in FGM bonds, you do primary markets, you need as um, you need minimum of 50 million. However, this can be bought in the secondary market as well. Uh, for the secondary market, which has low as 20 million, you can also participate in this market. And the secondary market is always there for to, to grant some sort of liquidity. So um, investors or bond holders can easily buy into this form of investment and exits whenever they feel like. Um, other investments that we can talk about that uh, I won't really be interested in mutual uh, funds. There can be a mix of this, of all these um, investment fund as that will have equity, have some part of treasury bills and bonds, and all these um, forms of investments are viable investments that, to an extent, you guarantee your capital. Uh, last but not the least is equities and basically what equities entail is you're buying into shares of um companies through either i mean the public offer or through the secondary um uh, through the Nigerian exchange basically what it entails is you're buying in anticipation of the growth of that company so it's all available for you to buy uh, your dividend payment and also guarantee share price improvements whenever the economy is social macro um, um, situations is good. So, uh, all this being said, before you go to investment, it is advisable you to understand. And ask questions. Just ask questions. You can always reach out to us at Afri Invest. Ask questions about, and we'll do our little background check and um, give you um, a feedback if it's something worth doing or not. And we'll also give you options you can explore. Thank you so much. I'll let Treasure uh, take it up from there. from there. Thank you, Balaji. That was very detailed. Thank you so much for introducing us to all those products. I always say that for every unsafe and shaky investment, there is a replacement or there's an alternative, sure, safe and risk. Well, less risk investments, of course, because there's some investments that are legit but have a bit of risk. Now, let me just take like a minute or two to share my own experience. Um, I also got involved with MMM. I know that this is laughable because you're thinking, uh-uh, investment guru, outcomes. Well, everybody has a past, so please don't judge me. Um, so it was at some at point that it was going around. I'm sure everyone can remember that year. And I think I was still in uni. And all my friends had done it and they had chucked their money, you know, they had gotten like time store of the money. So I was like, ah, yes, now. Uh -uh. So I was using everybody to test, so giving them, like, I knew it was not safe, but I was like, okay, you do. Did it work? Uh, okay, it worked. And so it was my turn. And then it wasn't a lot of money, though, but for a student, it was a lot. And I put my money in it. I did. And 
the number that I used to call was not going again. They gave me somebody else's number. That was the person that was supposed to pay me. The person didn't pick my call. Gave me another person's number. They didn't pick my call. All of a sudden, they deleted the WhatsApp group. So I was left hanging. And it burnt me, but I moved on. But that was a lot less money. And even the value of money was way higher then. And things were, were a lot easier. So I just want everyone to know, because I know that there's also a category of people that know that the investment is not safe. Some of us know that the investment is not safe. We know that this thing is tricky, but we're like, if I join early, I'll get my money and leave. It's somebody else that will suffer for it. And these are the kind of people that allow the investments to keep going because you keep giving them money. Other people keep hearing that, ah, this person cashed out, that person cashed out. So it's very important. If you know it's not legit, don't gamble with it. Don't say, let me put this amount. You know, we've had clients come to us and say, ah, I wish I did that commercial paper. I did. I wish I did that TVs. I wish I did this one. I did that one when they were selling that product to me. And we can't help because when it comes to helping you retrieve your money, it's not, you know, we can't do so much. So I just want to remind everybody that nobody is above falling into this investment option. So you need to go back and check the red flags. If you want to go back and watch this on YouTube before you take any investment decision to say, what were the red flags they said? Let me make sure that I'm not, you know, falling into that again. It's very okay. And over time, you get used to the system and learn to check and be careful. Um, we have a few questions here that I will be directing to um, our discussant. Someone says, Mr. Ola Lere Babashala says, on commercial papers, do you appraise the products before offering them to your clients? Or do you leave the risks to your clients? What DD do you do on CPs before offering them to your clients to subscribe to? What it means by DD is due diligence. Um, so Taiwo, can you help us with this? All right, thank you, uh, Treasure. Um, on your question, Mr. Laleri, yes, um, we do our own uh, due diligence as a company to actually make sure that whatever product we push out to our investors, they are well, I mean, we've done all our own um, side of the um, business to ensure that whatever it is the client is investing in something that we're sure that it's a legit one and it's something that if they call back they can get back their money so we are not leaving the risk uh, to investors when it comes to the product that comes from our free invest we've done our own diligence and uh, you know our own reputation too is something that we hold in high esteem so we don't want to push out something that uh, will come back to us and then, then for investors too, they can be assured that whenever they invest in a commercial paper, we give them all the information that is required for them also to take that investment decision. Also, nailing it on the head about due diligence. Yes, we do. We do our own due diligence. We do all it takes as an investment house and as your broker to make sure that uh, you, you have the right investment on your table. Thank you. Thank you, Tyro. Yes, we do our due diligence before we share any information. Um, this question I would like to direct to Bolaji. The question says, okay, once I invest 100K in, once, okay, say one invests 100K in treasury bills, what is the return, for example, for 90 days? Okay, um, uh, that's, that's a good question, but like you said, since you go, you're going to be investing through the secondary market, uh, the rates fluctuate. So it's not, um, it's not static. So let's say you wish to invest today, the rates might be 4% or maybe 3%. And in some two or three days time, it might have reduced or gone up simply because it's a secondary market and that particular treasury bills is being traded. People are buying into it and people are selling it as well. So um, what I would suggest is whenever you're ready to make any um, investments, you can always reach out to us. A simulation will be forwarded to you. Then um, you will have an idea of um, how much your interest will be. I hope this answers your question. Thank you, Bolaji. Um, I have a question for Doing, Ade Doing. 
This question says, CBN treasury bills are currently less than two digit rates, except for commercial papers. So I will say anything above 12%. Oh, my apologies, I'm reading a response. Let me take that again. There's a question here that says that, how do we know what rates is reasonable for investments and what rates is not safe? Are they doing? Okay, that question is kind of tricky because relative um, reasonable is relative. Um, some people, but what you should look out for is some people would come to you and say, bring 300 and in 45 minutes, we'll give you 500,000. You know, that is already a red flag, it's unreasonable. Then for some investments, commercial papers, depends on the organization issuing the commercial paper, you could see something as high as 13%, 14% in the market. And for treasury bills, is you could see 7%, 6%. That's why I said is a relative. But anything that seems too good to be true, like uh, we'll double your money one day or 45 minutes or even 30 minutes, that should raise the red flag. So I hope um, that has been able to answer your question. Thank you, Adedoin. Um, there's another question that I will be directing to Taiwo. It says, I did private placement in 2006 with Orient Petroleum that is fully registered with SEC. Feels like we've answered a question related to this, but I'll go ahead. But till today, I have no news about the company. Is there anything I can do? Yes, there's something you can do. And what you can do is writing directly to security and exchange itself. They are very responsive. They will literally get back to you what and what happened to your phone. Thank you. Thank you, Taiwo. But I'd just like to state that this is not a guarantee that you will get the money back. We wish we had better news. We wish it was easier to catch scammers, but it is what it is at this point. They would respond, but there's no guarantee that the money is going to come back to you. But yes, please try to reach out to them. Thank you. We'll be taking some questions later, but at this point, we would like to invite our last speaker, who is definitely not the least. She's the Managing Director of Afro Invest Securities Limited, a subsidiary of Afro Invest West Africa Limited. She's very knowledgeable. Imagine, you can imagine what it takes to lead a team like ours, and you know, it's an all-rounder. Without further ado, welcome with me, Ade Doni Allen. Welcome, Ade Doni. Thank you, Treasurer, and thanks everyone for taking out time out of your busy schedule to join this um, town hall meeting this afternoon. And we hope it's been worth your time and you've been able to learn one or two things. And um, we just hope that going forward, um, that your ad ed money would um, keep making more money for you and you wouldn't fall into some of these kind of investments. So it's just for us to be extra cautious when it comes to putting our money in investments. Look at the product you're investing in, just like we've said, the product you're investing your funds in, do extra due diligence, ask questions. You can never be too sure, or you can never ask so, uh, too much questions. Just be sure and trust your instincts. If something is telling you this is too good to be true, it is probably too good to be true. So um, I'll just um, quickly discuss the frame that I'm discussing with you this afternoon. That's after invest securities. You might want to know about us. We've been in existence for over 27 years and we're regulated. We're licensed by Securities and Exchange Commission, an authorized dealing clerk of the Nigerian Exchange. We do government regulated, majorly government reg regulated investments. That is the um, Treasury Bills investments. I know someone asked the question on the chat box saying some banks don't do individual investment or corporates, but organizations like us, we deal with individuals. So if you have as low as 100,000 Naira, we can invest in commercial um, treasury bills on your BL. Then even as low as 5,000 Naira, you can invest in products through Afri Invest. We currently have the federal government savings bond is open. It's really opened once every month. The one for June is currently opened and it's closing on Friday. You can invest for two years or three years. The two years is about 8% and um, the three years is about 9%. That's the um, that's what this month's auction is going for. So you can take advantage of so many investments, of a secured investment opportunities. Um, yeah, we also do commercial papers and equities trading. We've touched on all of our, all our products over time. 
And um, we are a one-stop, I like to pride ourselves as a one-stop financial markets does think of anything investment you see our friend invest there we are a subsidiary of a group we have trustees business corporate finance that we do advisory capital we have the asset management someone asked on the group if we do dollar denominated investments yes we do we would link you up to the appropriate quarter anything you think about investment just reach out and would we'll be glad to direct you um, or to hold your hands through your investment journey Thank you so much for joining and we look forward to more interactive sessions. This is not the end yet. So please don't leave. If you have questions, contributions, we'll be glad to um, discuss. It's a town hall meeting. So we'd open the floor for discussion now. If you have experiences or questions, we'll be glad to answer. Enjoy the rest of your evening and um, have a nice day ahead. Thank you, Adejoy. For those that don't know, that is the Managing Director of Afrin Securities Limited. I want to thank everyone that stuck with us till now on this conversation. So now we're going to fully open the floors for questions. I'm going to be reading out a few questions and be, you know, asking that some of the discussants answer. There's a question here from Elijah Okorie. Ah, okay. The person says, this is to Adejoin. The person says, kindly list shares that are profitable year on year? That's a tricky one, but I did it. <laughs> yeah, so it's, you know, equities is um, kind of tricky. Just like um, Treasurer has said, yes, we can, you can reach out, we'll give you, we'll give, we do stop recommendation over time and we have um, reports showing companies historical um, performances. So if we reach out, we'll give you some of this, but listening name of companies, it's kind of tricky. If we look at year on year, the equities market has returned over 23%. And there are different sectors that's contributed to it. We have the oil and gas sector contributing to majority for this year. Like Seplat alone has done over 94% increase year on year. We have MTN shares, some people that invested in the primary offer. MTN has done between this year has done over 40% aside from the dividend. So there are different companies. If we start listing all the companies and they are returned here to date, I'm sure we wouldn't leave this webinar. As I said, it's tricky. But um, the equities market, the Nigerian equities market this year is in positive. And um, there are some stocks that, contrib that contributed to it. We have Etel Africa. We can't list all of them, but I know I've been able to um, list a few. But if you reach out, we'll be able to go into more in-depth um, analysis for you. Thank you. Thank you, Adedoye. I'd like to tell Mr. Elijah Okoye, if you're still here with us, to send an email to brokerage team at afrinvest.com. We would have a conversation with you and based on your appetite and what we think will profit you, we will give recommendations. Um, this question is for Bolaji. The question is from Adalbi. She says, please, how does one get feedback on shares and dividends? Myself and my parents have invested in shares, but we can no longer keep track of the shares. Can Afro Invest help with this? Balaji? Okay, oh, what a very lovely question. I've been expecting something like this actually. <laughs> um, I think the first step you need to take is understand or try to remember how um, you bought the figure an IPO. An IPO basically is an initial public offer and you were given share certificates or you bought through the secondary market, which is through um, a stock broken firm. So um, if you are able to give us this information, we would know how to, how to uh, help you retrieve all your dividends and outstanding shares. I assure you, we will. So kindly reach out to us. We'll be glad to, to, to uh, Thank you, Balaji. Thank you so much. So like Balaji said, you can send us an email and we can hold your hand through this process and help you do all the findings and, you know, see where the shares are, at, what dividends you have and all. So don't fret. Like Donny said, we are the one stop shop for everything investment so you come to the right place i have a question for tyro from somebody in our audience 
The person says, how effective is your stop recommendation? This question is a title. All right, thank you, Treasure. Yes, uh, speaking to our stock recommendation, actually, you know, um, the capital market at the moment, there's no crystal ball, so to say, to what the next minute will be in the market. But by virtue of our professional in the research department, they put a lot of um, features together, which helps them to gauge what is uh, obtainable at the moment, what kind of stock is obtainable for an individual and based on their performances, just like you mentioned, looking back at their performances, their year to year uh, results and all that, all these features, all these uh, metrics are what we put together to use and give out our recommendation. So if, if you are keen on them, um, investment when it comes to equity you also as an individual will need to know what are the uh, what are the benefits what are those futures that entails investing in equities you you need to know the risk associated with it you need to know if it is something that you can take on to based on your risk appetite so that if what the recommendation you are given does not give you 100 percent but it probably gives you 50 percent and system, you are aware of what exactly it entails so um Back to your question, we will give you a recommendation and also implore you that you yourself as an individual, you have a role to play when it comes to investing in equities. Thank you. Thank you, Taiwa. Thank you very much. Our team have been put together after a lot of thoughts. These are people who are very knowledgeable about the market. So you, you can just relax when it comes to us. The research team, they know what they're doing when it comes to this. Um, I have another question to add it doing the question says it's from Rotimi Olubi. Thank you, Mr. Rotimi. We are seeing quite many questions from you. It shows that you're paying attention here. So he says, since treasury bills is now taxed, what about commercial paper? Is the interest also taxed? Are doing? Yes, you know, they were taxed ex exempt on fixed income deposit, on fixed income investment prior to now. But earlier this year, the um, federal government started taxing, the exemption lapsed, and they started taxing on most fixed income uh, investments. For commercial paper, some of the companies would come and tell you it's tax taxable. But if it's taxable, some would come and say it is not taxable. But before uh, investments, it would have been clearly stated how if it's tax deductible or not. But most of the commercial papers um, we've seen um, this year, we've been charged tax. Is tax deductible just like um, treasury bills? Thank you, Adedrin. Thank you very much. Um, this question is to Taiwo. We have quite a number of questions, so we'll be taking them one by one. It says if one already has an account with CSES, how can one claim dividends or is it automatically added to your portfolio? Okay, uh, for an investor who already have a CSS account and uh, you've got shares into this account that you have unclaimed dividend. So before now, we know we normally issue out dividend or warranty for, for you to get your dividend. But for about some years now, they've made it an electronic process. And this is just for you to fill a particular form, which we call the e-dividend mandate form for the registrars responsible for this company. So as it is now, if you have any outstanding dividend that you know is I mean, accrued to you and is not yet paid to you, just confirm that you have filled the e-dividend mandate form. And if you have not, you can send out that email. We will help you out to get the form feel and then submit on your behalf to the right registrar so that all that is pending for you with those registrars will pay directly into your bank account. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Taiwo. This question is to Bolaji. It's from Mr. Rotimi. He says, I invested in treasury bills over 25 years ago and never collected any interest because I was instructed by the company First Stock Brokers Limited to be rolling over. But now the company has gone under. How can I get my money back? Um, this is a very interesting question. And uh, hello, I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can, Bolachi. Go ahead. Hello. 
Okay, let me let me just uh, take the question, Bonaji. You're breaking up, so let me just uh, take the question. The red flag is already there for treasury bills. You are investing for a particular tenor, and on maturity of that tenor, the funds should at least be made available to you, or you should be given an option to either liquidate or roll over. Not telling them, not the friend telling you to keep rolling over. That's the red flag. You would have insisted and gotten your money at that point. So probably your investment was not in treasury bills. And they just told you it's treasury bills. So that's the red flag. As, well, as I said, on every product you're investing in, do your due diligence and ask questions. At the point they kept saying, rolling, roll over, roll over, you should have picked up the red flag and insisted to be paid before they went under. Sorry for that, but uh, I'm sure uh, this kind of scenario would not play out again now that you've attended this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Adedri. I think we'll just take a few more questions so that we can round up. Um, this question is to Tyro. It says, what impact does liquidity and credit portfolio credit rating of A minus and A minus from Augusto and Data Pro, respectively, have on proposed commercial papers in terms of the risk. All right. Um, when it comes to credit rating for companies that do come out for commercial paper, there are different ratings that are associated with this. You have the AA plus, you have the AA, and you have the uh, B plus you have the BB and all that. But the, the minimum on this rating is the BBB. And uh, it means that this company, when you invest in them, you can be sure that, okay, these are very good to go, so to say, and it is a bond on them that they are, they are able to return back your money, that's get back your fund whenever the investment matures. So beyond this, uh, these are what we, the part of the due diligence we do as a company as well when it comes to rating for a company. So when you go between A up to BBB, then you know that this is a company that you can invest in and get fund back. But beyond, beyond that, that, you can be sure that um, um, it's not not something that you need to look at if it's a risk you want to um, go into investing with that company or not. Thank you. Thank you, Taiwo. Thank you very much. Um, our final question for today. We apologize if we cannot take all your questions, but remember that you can send us an email at brokerage team at afriinvest.com and we will answer all your questions. We're ever open to have a phone conversation with you to walk you through. So the final question is to add doing our managing director. The question says, please, I am interested in your dollar denominated investment. Okay, please, then you can call my number after this. Then we'll be able to guide you on how to go about it. You know, there are several ones. There's a the mutual fund, there's euro bond. So we'll be able to discuss our length, depends on how much you're willing to invest and how long. You can um, do a screenshot of the, um, this contact page and reach out after the, after the webinar. Yes. Thank you so much to everyone. I'm so sorry we can't take all of your questions, but we feel like we've taken at least quite a number. And some questions are repetitive, two, three people asking them. So we're sorry if we only took one person's own, it's because we feel like we've responded to some of the questions. We can see very many well done. A lot of our audience are saying well done. Thank you. On behalf of the team, we're saying thank you. You make our work worth it. So thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for investing with us. Thank you because you will continue to choose us. You know, we're sticking because we know. Thank you so much. Yes, this will be available on YouTube. So you can go on YouTube and watch. You can share the link with with a family member, with a colleague, with a team of people, whoever needs it, you know, we're here looking out for each other. So please make sure you share it with people. Our YouTube channel, you can just search at AfroInvest and it will pop up. So you'll see this there. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for making this worthwhile. Thank you for your questions. And we're sorry about your experiences, but we're here to help you make better decisions. So this is cheers to making better investment decisions going forward. Are we promising each other? Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now. Bye.